Stop. Do not buy an Apple TV right now. Put your wallet away. I know the current model is tempting. It is fast, it is polished, and it integrates perfectly with your iPhone. But if you pull the trigger today, you might end up regretting it sooner than you think. Why? Because the leaks are piling up. We aren't just hearing whisper quiet rumors anymore. We are seeing hidden code references, reports from top tier analysts, and supply chain hints that all point to one massive conclusion. Apple is gearing up for its biggest living room shakeup in years. We're talking about the Apple TV 4K 2025. This isn't just a simple spec bump. If even half of the leaks are true, this next box could redefine what a streaming device is supposed to do. We are looking at a potential new processor that rivals gaming consoles, a redesigned remote that finally fixes the one thing everyone hates, and a secret plan to turn this black box into the absolute brain of your smart home. Today, we are going deep. We're going to break down the release window, the new silicon, the connectivity upgrades, the software secrets, and that wild rumor about a built-in camera and speaker. By the end of this video, you will know exactly whether to wait or buy. Let's dive in. First, we have to set the stage with a reality check. The current Apple TV 4K, which is the third generation, launched back in late 2022. In the tech world, and specifically in Apple years, a device that hasn't been touched in a few cycles starts to show its age. Sure, the current box runs the A15 Bionic chip. It supports 4K HDR, Dolby Vision, and Dolby Atmos. It is arguably still the best streamer you can buy today. But the cracks are starting to show when you look at where Apple is heading. tvOS is getting heavier. Apple Arcade is pushing for higher fidelity games. And with the rise of Apple Intelligence, their new AI initiative, the A15 chip might soon find itself hitting a ceiling. That pressure is exactly why the rumor mill is spinning faster than ever. Let's talk about timing because this has been the biggest question mark for everyone. Originally, the expectation was a late 2024 release. We saw hints, we saw chatter, but obviously that window has stretched. The conversation among the most reliable insiders has shifted. We looked at people like Mark Gurman at Bloomberg and analyst Ming-Chi Kuo. These are the guys who usually know what Apple is doing before Apple does. Both have reported that a new box is in the pipeline. The consensus now points directly at the first half of 2025. Apple loves to drop these updates alongside other major products. Think about a spring event where they announce new iPads or Macs or potentially a quiet press release drop. If you are watching this and we are approaching a major Apple keynote, that is the moment to pay attention. The 2025 timeframe makes sense because it aligns with a three-year refresh cycle, giving the previous model just enough time to saturate the market before the new king arrives. Now. Let's get into the guts of the machine. The biggest upgrade, the one that nearly every leak agrees on, is the silicon. The current model uses the A15 Bionic. That is the same chip found in the iPhone 13 lineup. It is powerful, but it is starting to get old. The 2025 Apple TV is rumored to jump to an A16 or potentially even an A17 class chip. Why does this matter for a TV box? You might think, I just watched Netflix. Why do I need an A17 chip? It isn't just about opening apps faster. It is about longevity and headroom. An A17 class chip opens the door for genuine console quality gaming. We have seen what the A17 Pro can do on the iPhone 15 Pro, running games like Resident Evil Village and Assassin's Creed Mirage with hardware-accelerated ray tracing. Imagine that power in a box that is plugged into the wall where it doesn't have to worry about battery life. We are talking about stable 60 frames per second in heavy titles, better thermal management, and the ability to handle whatever complex features future versions of tvOS throw at it. If you plan to keep your streaming box for five years, you want that extra horsepower today so it doesn't feel sluggish three years from now. Alongside that processor bump, there is growing speculation about memory and storage. This is a huge pain point right now. The current Apple TV tops out at 128 gigabytes. That sounds like a lot until you download a few high-end games from Apple Arcade, cache some 4K screen save, RS, and install your suite of streaming apps. Suddenly, you are managing storage. A bump to 128 gigabytes as the base model 
with a 256 gigabyte option on high end, would make a massive difference. It signals that Apple is serious about this device being a multimedia hub, not just a portal for streaming. Plus, more RAM, likely jumping from 4 gigabytes to 6 or 8 gigabytes, would keep apps in memory longer. You know that annoying feeling when you switch from YouTube to Disney Plus and then back to YouTube, and the app has to reload from scratch? More RAM fixes that. It keeps the experience fluid. Let's talk connectivity. This is the stuff that isn't sexy, but makes your life noticeably better. The current Apple TV supports Wi-Fi 6. The 2025 model is almost certainly going to upgrade to Wi-Fi 6E or even Wi-Fi 7. If you live in a crowded apartment building or a house with a lot of devices, this is a game changer. Wi-Fi 6E opens up the 6 GHz band, which is like a super highway with no traffic. This means less buffering when you're trying to stream a 4K HDR movie with a high bitrate. It means lower latency if you're using features like remote play to stream games from your PS5 or your Mac to your living room TV. It makes the connection rock solid. And of course, we expect the Thread Radio support to continue, keeping the Apple TV as the central border router for your smart home accessories. There's also a very specific technical rumor floating around regarding video codecs. We are hearing whispers about hardware support for AV1 decoding. If you're a video nerd, you know why this is huge. If you aren't, let me explain. AV1 is a newer video compression standard. It is more efficient than the older codecs, meaning it could deliver higher picture quality using less data. YouTube already leans heavily on AV1. Right now, the Apple TV has to do this work via software where it doesn't do it as efficiently as it could. Having a chip with native AV1 hardware decoding means you get crisper 4K streams with less bandwidth usage. It future-proofs the device as more streaming services like Netflix and Disney Plus adopt this standard to save money on server costs. It is one of those invisible upgrades that you will appreciate every time you hit play. I know some of you are screaming, what about 8K at the screen? Let's address it. Yes, rumors of 8K support pop up every cycle. But let's be real. There is almost no native 8K content. Streaming services aren't prioritizing it because the bandwidth costs are astronomical. Apple is historically very conservative here. They usually wait until a technology is mainstream before adopting it. While the new chip could technically handle 8K output, don't expect it to be the selling point of the 2025 model. Apple is much more likely to focus on perfecting 4K with higher frame rates and better dynamic range than chasing a resolution that 99% of people can't even display on their TVs. Now, we have to discuss the remote, the Siri remote. It has a love-hate relationship with users. The touch-click pad is better than the old trackpad, but it still isn't perfect. However, the biggest issue is that the remote is small, slippery, and loves to vanish into couch cushions. This is where the leaks get tangible. In recent iOS and tvOS beta builds, developers have gone digging and found code references to an unreleased Apple TV remote. The model number does not match the current generation. Apple does not add new hardware identifiers for fun. That almost always means a physical product is being tested. What does a redesigned remote look like? The number one feature on everyone's wish list is Find My Integration. It is honestly baffling that we have this technology in AirTags, in iPhones, and even in the AirPods charging case, but not in the one object in your house that is most likely to get lost. A new remote with a U1 or U2 ultra wideband chip would let you use your iPhone to precision find the remote when it slides under the sofa. Beyond that, we might see a slightly modified layout, maybe dedicated buttons for certain functions or perhaps backlit keys. Have you ever tried to pause a movie in a pitch black room and hit the wrong button? Backlighting would solve that instantly. It is a small quality of life change that would make the premium price tag feel much more justified. But hardware is only half the story. To really understand the 2025 Apple TV, you have to look at the software trajectory. TVOS is slowly evolving from a simple app launcher into a proactive dashboard. Look at the recent updates. We got FaceTime on the TV, which uses your iPhone camera. We got Insight, which shows you actor names and song titles in real time. 
similar to Amazon's X-Ray. We got dialogue enhancement that uses machine learning to isolate speech so you can actually hear what people are saying in action movies. This points toward a future where the Apple TV is the brain. And this brings us to Apple intelligence. While Apple hasn't fully unleashed their AI on the TV yet, the 2025 model will likely be built for it. Imagine voice control that actually works. I'm not just talking about Siri, open Netflix. I mean natural language processing. Siri, show me that movie where the guy from the office fights a shark. A more powerful processor allows this processing to happen on device, which is faster and more private. We could see local analysis of your personal media, facial recognition for your home videos, and smarter recommendations that know who is sitting in the room based on whose iPhone is nearby. Now, let's get into the wildest rumor. The Moonshot device. For years, reliable sources like Bloomberg have reported that Apple is experimenting with a hybrid product. A single device that combines the Apple TV, a smart speaker like the HomePod, and a FaceTime camera. Think of it as a high-end soundbar or a center channel speaker that sits under your TV. It handles your streaming. It fills the room with audio so you don't need extra speakers, and it has a camera for video calls and gesture control. Will this be the 2025 Apple TV? It is possible, but it might be a separate, higher-tier Pro product. However, the technology being developed for that device will trickle down. Even if we just get a standalone box in 2025, it might have deeper integration with HomePods for home theater audio. It might support wireless connections to external cameras. Apple wants to own the living room, and right now, having a separate box, separate speakers, and using your phone as a webcam is a bit clunky. An all-in-one solution is the ultimate goal, and the 2025 refresh could be the first step toward that unified vision. Let's talk about the strategy and pricing, because this is where Apple has struggled. The streaming market is dominated by cheap sticks, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast. These things cost $30 or $40. The Apple TV 4K starts at $129. That is a massive premium. Rumors have suggested that Apple has considered a lower cost stick to capture market share, but so far, they have resisted. The likely strategy for 2025 is to keep the premium positioning. They aren't trying to make the cheapest streamer. They're trying to make the best computer for your TV. We expect the pricing to remain similar, sitting in that $129 to $149 range. However, they might keep the current 2022 model around at a discount, dropping it to maybe $99 to entice entry-level buyers. This good, better, best strategy works well for the iPad and the iPhone, so seeing it applied to the TV lineup makes sense. You get the affordable option for the guest room and the powerhouse A17 model for your main home theater. So, this brings us to the ultimate question. The reason you clicked on this video, should you buy the Apple TV 4K right now, or should you wait? If your current setup is dying, if you're using a smart TV interface that lags, or an old HD streamer that buffers constantly, the current Apple TV 4K is still a fantastic device. It is miles ahead of the competition in terms of interface speed and privacy. You will not hate it. But if you're a tech enthusiast, a gamer, or someone who wants to future-proof their home, the signs are telling you to wait. We are relatively close to the potential release window. Buying a device at the tail end of its life cycle is always risky. The 2025 model promises a leap in processing power that will keep it relevant for half a decade. It promises a remote that you won't lose. It promises the connectivity speeds of the future. The gap between the A15 and an A17 or newer chip is significant, especially as AI features begin to roll out across Apple's ecosystem. You do not want to be the person who spends $150 today only to see a vastly superior model launch six months later for the same price. My advice? If you can hold out, hold out. The next generation of Apple TV is shaping up to be the mature, powerful Hub W. You have been waiting for. It is going to be the device that finally merges high-end gaming, smart home management, and premium streaming into one seamless experience. I want to know what you think. Is a faster chip enough to make you upgrade? Or are you waiting for that all-in-one HomePod camera hybrid? And seriously, how many times have you lost your remote this week? Let me know in the comments down below. This product, in my opinion, 
is going to be the sleeper hit of 2025. It's the piece of the puzzle that connects everything else in the Apple ecosystem. If you like this video and want to stay updated on every leak as it happens, make sure you hit that subscribe button, share this video with your friends who are thinking about buying a new TV setup, and smash that bell icon so you never miss an upload. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.